Hi, welcome to the garden. Today is Saturday and you know what Saturday means. We're going to do a quick review of this garden, then we're going to go to you and we're going to celebrate your garden. And if you're new to my channel, you're in for a real treat. Saturdays are reserved for you, your ideas, your inspiration, and your motivation to come out here and garden every day. Round two of our squash seem to be doing pretty good. Now if you can see everything flying around me, those are June beetles. They're not hurting the garden, they're just looking to mate. That's almost ready to pick. The June beetles aren't to be confused with the Japanese beetles, which are also green and iridescent. And the Japanese beetles will do a number on your garden. The first year I was pretty freaked out about these June beetles, but they really don't do much to the garden at all. You really need to know the pests in your garden. And right here, these squash bugs, I'm going to get some neem oil and we'll take care of that. This is just cold pressed neem oil and Dawn dish soap. And while I hunt a couple more critters, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of our friends and neighbors around the world. Art's main garden turned out to be too small, so of course what do you do? You add three more deep mulch growing areas. His wife said the front yard was definitely off limits. Art's gardens are really starting to bear fruit. And of course, what do you do when you have a bunch of tomatoes and other goodies? Well, of course, you make salsa from mild to super hot. Art is also planning for his fall garden. Those seedlings are up. Art, this is great. Thank you. Mike and Linda said their garden is suffering the dog days of summer. But the heat-loving plants are thriving in their Zone 8 deep mulch garden. The arch full of loofah is wonderful. Mike, Linda, thank you. Weren't those fantastic? And you could help us out by hitting that like button. That would have YouTube push this out to more people that might want to learn how to garden. Yeah, we got a little damage here in the squash patch, but it's doing pretty good for the almost end of July. And we've got round two coming up. We've got round three and four in the ground. So we're gonna have squash the rest of the year. You can do this too. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple more of our friends around the world. Larry's containers continue to produce nice amounts of excellent produce with more in line to harvest. Larry, you've had a bounty this year for sure. This is wonderful. Thank you. Walter's small enclosed trellis deep mulch garden has now overtaken the space and is growing fruit outside the fence. I believe the neighbor is delighted. Walter's abundance is epic and provides his family with wonderful meals. Walter, your garden is truly inspiring. Thank you. The work that our friends put in their gardens, just simply amazing. One of the reasons I come out here every day. But while I was over here, I noticed we've got a split in this vine and I'm gonna show you the strategy I use to take care of that kind of thing. Now since I've got the compost pile right over here, I'm just going to take a shovel full of compost and we're just going to bury that. Let me get another one. That goes ahead and seals that wound and if there is a vine bore in there, it will suffocate them out. While I get a couple more shovelfuls of compost, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple more of our friends around the world. Rick's Garden is also producing amazing amounts of beautiful produce of all kinds, from potatoes to peppers. And those tomatoes are spectacular. I can almost taste that sandwich. Rick, your abundance is wonderful. Thank you. Dell is a new contributor to our community from the Houston area. Dell sent a couple examples of the tomatoes and overwintered peppers from the container garden. This is Dell's third year gardening and the containers are producing really well. Dell, welcome to this community and thank you. Reese's containers and buckets are a mixture of okra, tomato, squash, marigolds, and a basil that's gotten out of hand, along with some sweet potatoes. Reese said he put too many tomatoes in each one of the tubs, and they're getting out of hand, but making nice fruit. Thank you, Reese, for sharing. This is wonderful. And I've been getting a squash off of this plant almost every day. And those are great. Just keep any, any eggs you see, just Lightly roll those off the leaves, let them hit the ground, the ants will take care of those. That's one of the best ways to battle the squash bugs. Got a 
couple more little crooknecks in here, but they're not quite big enough to bring in the house. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one of our friends. Let's stop in for a visit to Marie's garden in Jamaica. She produces everything in containers as she has nothing but rocks where she lives. Excellent work, Marie. Thank you. Daniel and Maylin are hard at work in Bruce's Florida food forest. I think homegrown pineapples are just incredible. And that dragon fruit is beautiful. The abundant tropical harvest is magical. Bruce showed us just why we do this. The food. And what a mouth-watering dinner that is. Thank you guys for sharing. And the consensus is in. And this is a type of a cantaloupe. Muskmelon. So it's growing nicely. I'm pretty happy we have that. Aren't our friends just incredible? Please leave a comment down below and let everyone know just how much you appreciate them sharing what's going on in their garden. And we invite you to become a member of this community. And we're just a loose-knit group of people that like to get our hands dirty and grow things that taste good. And that's why we do it, because this stuff is amazing. And the only way you know it's organic is if you grow it yourself, and you can do this too. And if you look at the diversity of our friends and neighbors, nobody's trying to tell anybody how to grow a garden. We just want to show everybody the possibilities. Northeastern Oklahoma, and I've got a moringa tree growing. Can you believe it? Let's go ahead and take a look at another one of our friends. Scott thought we might be interested in his latest lotus bloom as it danced in the July breeze. As an example, Scott turned me on a lotus. That's why we got lotus growing in the garden. I didn't know there were varieties of lotus roots that you can eat. It's a big staple around the world. Scott's also helped me turn Lotus on to a bunch of people in this community, and they've shared a lot of their pictures. You can do this too, and we do invite you to become a member of this group. I guarantee you all other gardeners would love to see what you're doing in your garden. One of the things planting carrots in July, today's not such a hot day, but that sun still is kind of brutal, and these little sprouts aren't very big, but you want to make sure that this stays moist. The seeds have to stay wet or they won't germinate. As soon as they get any growth on them at all, you want to expose them to the sun. If they get too leggy, they'll get baked immediately. You were here with me a few days ago when we planted more beets and okra. And now we're just waiting on round two of the squash to break the surface. Let's go on down to Texas and see what's going on in Valerie's garden. Valerie is coping with the Texas heat using a combination of shade cloth, bug netting, and that little mini vacuum to remove some of the nastier pests. This strategy seems to be working extremely well. Not only are her plants thriving, but round four, or is it round five, is well on its way. Your cut flowers are amazing this year, and your garden is simply blessed. And we appreciate the motivation you bring us week after week. Thank you, Valerie. Valerie, that was amazing. Okay, this sad little bit of corn right here, that was our very first corn that we put in, and it got frosted, and it got set back a little bit. It went ahead, and it's made some ears, and the tassels are browned off. So I'm thinking these are ready. They feel kind of ready, but this looks like a nice little ear. It's got quite a few little kernels. So even a failure. Now that's very disappointing. If that would have been a whole ear. Even the failure is worth it in the deep mulch garden. Our friends and neighbors are absolutely fantastic. And I am blessed to be able to provide a platform to let everybody share what's going on in their garden. I guarantee you this is where we get inspiration, ideas, motivation, and you can do this too. This is a garden where we supplement what we grow for our families because it tastes great. And this corn's doing exactly what it's supposed to do, and I'm expecting to have some really nice cobs here shortly. And once again, I was told I'm not promoting myself enough. So here goes. My name is Waylon Smalley. This is my garden. I didn't want a weed. If you wanted to subscribe, it would help me out. If you wanted to buy me a cup of coffee, you wouldn't hurt my feelings. And if you want to learn about the deep mulch, click that link right there and I'll meet you right back in the garden. And if you want to learn about the living soil, 
click that link right there and I'll meet you back in the garden. And until next time, remember, take care of yourself, take care of your family, and God bless you. Come on, let's plant. Let's go plant garden.